Greetings, gentlemen. You'll forgive me if there are any interruptions to this video. I am at this very moment applying my filth facial and filling up the bathtub with the waters of misery in which I tend to wallow, after which I always, on a daily basis, prostrate myself in front of the shrine of Zoltax, the god of poverty. But before I do any of that, I did want to talk about minimalism, MGTOW minimalism. I think we, generally speaking, do not have an idea of what this means, and so I am setting out in this video to talk about it in a more defined manner. It's not as complicated as people think, and I also think that its meaning has been misconstrued and in some cases completely misrepresented. For example, misrepresented with terms such as vows of poverty, which apparently even Vention, the revered father of MGTOW, have bought into. But what do I mean, at the very least, by minimalist, or minimalism, or minimalist MGTOW? It's pretty simple, and I think it's something that all men who are going their own way can relate to. Recognizing your needs and wants, and living in accordance with them. Now, that could be a huge number of things for various individuals with an enormous range of what is considered a requirement, a need, or a want. Now, of course, there are human universals. You know, having a roof over your head, eating, uh, paying bills, etc. But the, beyond the very basic necessities, I think this is what, what we're really talking about. You have other needs and other desires and other wants. For me, a minimalist approach simply comprises the idea of assessing what I actually want in my life and what I don't want and what I need in my life and what I don't need. And as I said, MGTOW are well adapted to this mode of thought. After all, part of the personal evolution of every man going his own way is rejecting and rebuking the model of social intercourse that has been prescribed to him throughout his life by his instincts, number one, and also by society as a greater reflection of human instincts. And I can only speak for myself. And when I speak of minimalism, the minimalist program, if you will, that I speak of is only applicable to myself because there's someone else out there who might have a very similar program and similar inclinations and similar needs and wants, but might be somewhat different in some regards. And there are other people with much greater needs, or rather more expansive needs. But let me give you the breakdown. As I live today, I work about 30 hours less than I used to a few years ago. And I'm not including commuting and transportation. If I add that into the mixture, it's closer to 40 hours of free time. Free time all on my own, free time where I can make videos, do research to make videos, play video games, read, study on my own, take walks, exercise, and do whatever I want. Now, it might seem that this is really difficult to achieve, but there's some things to consider. Clothing. I don't spend money on clothing. I wear the same clothing I wore eight years ago. Some of it's tattered, some of it has paint stains on it. I care not. I've never given a shit about clothing. To paraphrase my friend Barbarossa, you know, fashion is for women, men wear clothes because when men need, know that clothing is there to clothe. Never was very interested in it. Now, there was a time, of course, when I worked in an office environment where I was essentially forced to conform to social standards of wearing certain attire, and that was more expensive. I had to wear uh, nice shoes, in, I'm using air quotes, nice shoes and nice trousers, all in air quotes, nice shirts, jackets sometimes, and I had to iron stuff. I haven't ironed anything in eons because I just don't give a shit how wrinkly my clothing is. So right there, saving money, or rather not spending money on that stuff. Then there's commuting, saving money there. So even though I make less than I used to, back at a quote-unquote normal job, 
I don't make far less because I have no commuting costs and I have no clothing costs and I have no ironing costs. And there are, of course, little things. As all of you know by now, I have absolutely no hair, so I don't need to go to the barber for haircuts. That said, uh, I don't make enough to save money, and I admit that. And at some point in time, I will have to consider other options. And I think those options inevitably will lead me down a path that I have trodden in the path, uh, past, and I will end up having to work a more conventional job and one that is more lucrative to me personally. But that time has not yet arrived. It could arrive in half a year's time, in years of time, in a year's time, two years, three years, I don't know. Although I'm estimating approximately two years, because there are still things I'd like to do, and I suppose I should consider old age if I am fortunate or unfortunate enough to live to a quote-unquote ripe old age. But for now, I am enjoying my free time. There is a huge difference when you have 40 extra free hours a week. I mean, I do what I want. Uh, I study what I want. Sometimes I can get away with not doing any work all day, apart from some, some research for a video, playing games, reading books that interest on topics that interest me, etc. It's just a completely different world. Never mind the fact that I don't have to interact with people anymore, which is a joy. Do you know, ever since I stopped interacting with people for the purposes of work, I've not a single time caught a common cold. Now, I'm not saying I'm immune to the common cold by no means, but I have less to do with people directly, and so I'm less exposed to human beings being a vector for rhinoencephalitis, a.k.a. the common cold. But all of this is only possible because I assessed what I personally need in my life and what I don't need. For example... I've never driven my entire life. Driving doesn't interest me. I don't need a car. And that's a huge expense. Now, I understand many people require a car. And there are even many people who are car enthusiasts. And that's an expensive hobby. If you are an automobile enthusiast that, like, that likes working on automobiles or driving them, of course, that's going to be more expensive. So you're going to have a larger or greater cost in terms of your hobbies or interests or requirements. The same is said for clothing. I don't give a fucking shit about clothing. Uh, it's just it's just there to keep me warm or whatever, to clothe me. I have no opinion of fashion or what have you. It doesn't interest me whatsoever. I don't need to live in a huge house. That doesn't interest me at all. At the moment, at least, I have no pets, although at some point in time, I'm thinking about getting a whippet. Not anytime soon, mind you, etc. So, Compare that with someone who lives in the Midwest or basically anywhere in the United States that's not perhaps Chicago, Boston, or New York City, and of course you're going to need a car, right? You might have a, a pet or an animal of some sort, a dog, that costs money too. Um, and you might have expensive interests such as automobiles, motorcycles. Uh, Colt, Coltane, for example, is a motorcycle enthusiast. It costs money to perpetuate that habit or that hobby, rather. Um, people might be interested in uh, other things that cost money, like electronics and fiddling with things. I mean, I have very simple uh, needs. I need the internet. I like to game. I like reading books. I, okay, I don't really enjoy exercising, though I force myself to do it. And, you know, that beyond that sounds pretty simple. Uh, that's it. Those are my interests. I say reading books. As you know, I'm universally interested in a great many things, but I'm not going to list all of those interests. That said, I don't need very much beyond the internet and occasionally ordering or buying books that suit my interests in order to fill that need. So the minimalist program for me is pretty simple. I know the kinds of things I need, right? And I can make an assessment of that. And I think MGTOW do that all the time in terms of other things that occur in life in terms of marriage and relationships and what have you. Um, none of this is an oath of poverty. I'm not starving. In fact, I'm, I'm doing fine in, in that regard. I'm more or less breaking even, and that's okay for now. And like I said, I have 40 extra hours a week to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Incidentally, I wouldn't, I've been making videos several times a week for the past couple of months, more or less, and that wouldn't be possible if I weren't doing the whole minimalist program. A la, a la Stardust style, of course. 
but people are different. I mean, if you're interested in automobiles and, and anything that's more expensive than just you know, reading books and studying and, and, and gaming occasionally, yeah, I mean, obviously it's going to cost a lot more money. Or if you have a pet or a dog or what have you, yeah, that's more expensive too. You might be required to drive around a car, as most Americans are who live outside the Northeast or Chicago. Another issue. So, you know, obviously... I cannot say this is the way to go. Every man who decides to pick a minimalist program is doing it on his own terms within the context of his own life. Now, it is important to accumulate wealth, I think, and that can be, however, contextual. This is just my opinion. Now, I'm sure Vention didn't actually mean or believe that I or others have taken vows of poverty. I know, for example, Vention is very big on wealth accumulation or acquisition. And there have been times in my life where I spent a great deal of time working in order to make money. But I think for most of us in life, those of us who are not born into independently wealthy families or what have you, the simple equation of modern life is you know, time is money. And I'm either working more, making more money, or having more time not making as much money. So there was a time many moons ago when I was working quite literally most of the time seven days a week, making for my standards a lot of money, and I saved so much that I was able to pay for uh, two master's degrees, expensive master's degrees, one of which is the most expensive university in the UK, whilst only working a little bit on the side. It's useful, and in that case, in that situation, for me, yeah, it was important to accumulate wealth. Now, at the end of that insane regimen of nonstop work, my health was in tatters. I was grossly overweight. I had the worst insomnia of my entire life. I was sick constantly. I had problems with my skin. Everything was a disaster. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I don't think I'd ever do it that way again. But yeah, been there and done that. And then there's, of course, something in between, the whole office thing, you know, the 40 to 50 hour work week, the nine to six or nine to five, I've done that too. And right now I just pretty much work at home. I do editorial work and formatting for documents for various clients that I used to have uh, contact with in the past or they're passed on to me by people I'm still in contact with. And yeah, I will admit that this channel that I have now is is part of my income and by me making videos and you helping either through AdSense or making donations or Patreon, that does certainly help me and it helps me make more frequent videos or what have you. But I don't, my point is I'm making is that at this point in time of my life, I don't need a whole lot. But then again, I've been thinking, you know, down the line, okay, the distant line, you know, just before death, when you're know, needing money for old age and what have you, okay, there's that. But there's also something that I've been thinking about re-educating myself. I've been thinking about maybe it's actually worth pursuing a, a degree, a PhD in evolutionary uh, psychology. Maybe I could push some of the ideas that have been pretty well researched in the MGTOW community into the mainstream. Maybe I could be that guiding force. I've thought about those things pretty frequently. And, you know, for that, I would need to start saving again and working a lot more, et cetera, et cetera. So I think really what it comes down to is that that eternal trade-off of time is money, right? I could be working more, making more money, or I could have more free time. At the moment, I enjoy those 40 extra hours a week that I have to do whatever I want and not have to worry about dealing with people, not have to worry about wearing ironed out, nice clothing, et cetera, et cetera. When the time comes, however, of course, I would have to conform to their standards or the standards of the world. I'd have to wear nice clothing, et cetera. That's particularly true if you're a teacher, you know, because you are, quote, unquote, a figure of, of, of respect and authority and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't buy into any of that personally, but yeah, in order to get a job, you have to conform to that kind of shit. I'm in a fortunate situation right now. That situation... Well, nothing lasts forever, won't last forever, but for the time being, uh, and I hope for a while longer, I'm going to enjoy it for what it is, but that doesn't mean that what my need, that my needs are identical to other person's needs, or that you shouldn't, you know, if, if you want to accumulate lots of money, that's great. Personally, I hate 
I've hated every job I've ever worked up until now. Uh, and I do view making videos as a, uh, a part-time job. And I actually enjoy that. So that, that's something the first in my entire life. And I tolerate the, uh, the editorial and formatting stuff, which I had done in the past. And, you know, it, it is what it is, you know, but I don't hate it. The, the other stuff I did, I just, I just couldn't stand it most of the time. The whole teaching profession is fraudulent for the most part. Uh, working with people in an office, especially the translation industry. If you want to deal with Haridan women, go work in the translation industry. And even things in between. As you, many of you know, I used to work in a warehouse. That was just kind of an experiment. And even and eons ago, in my 20s, I used to work moving furniture for a while. That was a shitty, shitty, shitty job, though. So, you know, I've, I've done weird, you know, quote-unquote blue-collar jobs and white-collar jobs, and I haven't really enjoyed any of it. Now, if you're fortunate enough to enjoy your work, hey, more power to you. I'm not one of those people. And like I said, I prefer for myself to have extra time instead of extra money. But a lot of that has to do with me not having extravagant needs. You know, I can just lie on my couch and read the book. That doesn't cost me any money. I can research stuff online if I need to. <clears throat> I can, you know, I do need money for games occasionally, but, you know, I make enough money to buy games every now and then. And, you know, so it's not, none of this is prescriptive. If people have a different idea of what they need, then that's completely different. I mean, for example, I've talked to Coltane many times, and I don't. I mean, this term minimalism. I don't even know if it's the right term, but you know, he knows what he needs. You know, he's interested in motorcycles and, and hydroponics and all, all all those kinds of things, and that's going to cost money, right? So obviously, he needs more money to spend on that kind of stuff. Um, I'm I'm perhaps not a simple person, but I have simple needs. I don't need a big spot, a big house to live in. I don't even need a big flat to live in. All I need is a, is a pretty good computer that can run games pretty well, um, the ability to purchase books every now and then, enough to survive, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I really think at the end of the day, MGTOW minimalism comes down to assessing what your individual needs are and... That's all it is. It's not about taking vows of poverty. It's not about <laughs> wallowing in filth and misery. It's just about recognizing what you personally need and what you don't need. And I guess I just don't need a lot of stuff that a lot of people need, like cars and clothes and all that other shit. It just doesn't interest me. One lick. It actually never has. But, of course, when in a working situation where you have to work with people in an office, yeah, you have to wear clothes, you have to iron your clothes, you have to do all that shit that I just can't stand doing. And in my case, you know, commuting, not actually driving, but commuting, spending money on public transportation. You know, I'd, I'd rather just avoid that. But I should say this, you know, what, for the millionth time, none of this is a mandate. None of this is a dictate. This is just my point of view. That's what works for me. I mean, I know plenty of people that spend all their time working and they make shit tons of money. They don't have much time to spend it or much time to do anything else. But hey, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. But that's not for me. Uh, and it's not because I'm lazy. Um, it's just because I enjoy expending my energy in other activities. I mean, work, traditional, conventional work, is, it's, just, it's just drudgery. It's, you know, you're doing drudgery to get paid. Whereas if I'm reading up on the Holocene extinction event in North America where all the megafauna suddenly disappeared, you know, the Smilodon, saber-toothed cat, dire wolves, short-faced bear, etc., where the, the Mastodons, they all just disappeared, and it's one of the great mysteries, and there are many extinction theories. I mean, that's just fascinating to me. There are so many things that are fascinating to me. But I'm not getting paid to do that. So, you know... That's the difference, you know. I think for most of us, you can do things you you can you enjoy in your free time, or you can work, you can engage in drudgery and get paid for it. And you know, honestly, I've had enough drudgery in my life, and I know there will come a point in time when I'm gonna have to engage in more drudgery. I, you know, i.e., work, doing things I don't enjoy, interacting with people I don't like, etc. And, you know, when it, when it comes down to that, I will do it because I will have to do it and there won't be any choice. But I, I have make no illusions that I enjoy it. It's just going to be drudgery and hopefully it will be temporary and, and I can find a way to, to roll back to a more similar lifestyle as, as is the case now. Um, but, 
you know, that all depends on what my plans are. But as I said, minimalism in this context of going your own way is just assessing your personal needs, figuring out what you want, etc., and, you know, that's it. And it goes without saying that not engaging or dealing with women is is very, very cost effective. I mean, I have a mobile phone. This is this is a little story here. So I have this really simple mobile phone, right, for 9.99 euros, bought it like a year and a half ago, I don't know. And I use it maybe once every three months or something so i have to i top it up right for a certain period of time usually four months and because it's a a top up i i get a warning at the end of four months saying that i have to top up again even though there's still something like 15 or 16 euros on the phone that's how seldom i use my phone uh whereas back in the day when i was married you know i'm sending texts all the time all that shit spending money on dinner. Okay, you all guys all know the routine. That should cost lots of money. But all the other stuff that's associated with more conventional things like like working in a quote-unquote proper environment, wearing ironed-out clothing and blah, blah, blah. You know, for now, I can avoid that, and I'm, I'm happy for it. And yeah, I mean, I just, I just, honestly, I do have overall less money, but my quality of life is that much better. I mean, I have much less stress, my sleep patterns are not are certainly not perfect and never will be, but it's my sleep is better, my health is better, I feel better. I, I don't. I mean, I, I just can't really. Can, the only thing I can say is I used to make more money, but you know, minus the health. You know, I would get I would get sick more often, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I was more stressed out. I had to deal with these horrible freaking women at work. It's so for me, the trade off is really clear. So if you're interested in a quote-unquote minimalist program, whatever that ultimately is, that just consists of you thinking about what you need and, and going after it. And if that means uh, you know, making lots of money or whatever and, and working a lot and saving and investing, pff, hey, go for it. I'm, I have nothing against that. That's just not for me. But you know, that's just, these are just my opinions. These are just my views. None of that is dictatorial. None of that is a mandate. But, uh, you know, the bathtub is actually now full of uh, misery, and I need to go wallow in it. I just finished applying my uh, filth facial, and, of course, uh, the uh, the altar, the god of poverty, that needs some prostration. So I'm going to be heading off now, gentlemen. But as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to take your vows of poverty, wallow in filth and misery, and erect that shrine. That is the final and last commandment. Erect the shrine to the god Zoltax, god of poverty. You take care.